Alright, before we get started, I already know so many of you guys are interested in the giveaway. So, of course, to enter the giveaway, uh, we're just going to get started right away. Uh, you have to be already subscribed to my channel, so be sure to hit that little red button. But, of course, in order to win the giveaway, you need to comment down below, I guess, Shavalskis. Yeah! Have fun spelling it, guys. That'll be the keyword for this video. You just comment it down below. It can filter throughout all the comments, my little comment picker. And two lucky winners. Yeah, I'm going to be generous today, too. We'll be able to win the Conservation DLC. So be sure to comment Shavalskis down below in order for your chance to win the giveaway. Now, welcome, everyone, back to the City Conservation Center. Hope you all are having a wonderful day so far. So today, I can't wait to get started on our Preservation Plains area. This is essentially going to be where we keep our larger animals that really don't have the most interesting habitats, I'm not gonna lie, but we're gonna do our best to try and make them interesting. Whether it be for guest experience, whether it be for backstage elements, we're gonna try our best to make this area as fun as we can make it. Because relatively, uh, I know that personally, I don't really like these big expansive areas. A lot of the areas I tend to love in zoos are the indoor areas where you have like a whole bunch of different animals in one section. But still, I really want to try my best to make this area seem as interesting as possible. So as we make our way throughout here, we are going to be working on the fencing relatively first. Uh, so you can see me start to make custom fencing. This is, of course, on the workshop as we speak. So if you guys do look on my Twitter, which you can find down in my description down below, maybe even give me a little follow, you guys can actually find that fencing set as well as several other fencing sets that we do use in this build, as well as some future builds in this zoo as well, uh, just for your own use. I know so many of you guys love to use custom fences because they really are kind of tedious to make. Even I use some sometimes. But, um... Um, no, we essentially make our way throughout here and start to add as many details as we can. So, one of the things I really wanted to bring in in this section is the history of the Shavalski's Wild Horse. Uh, as many of you guys know, and many of you guys have pointed out, this is the last true wild horse that has existed in the wild. Very much like the Bactrian, not Bactrian, but the Dromedary Camel, all members of that species have been domesticated, and there are no more wild uh, dromedary camels anymore. Very much so like the rest of the horses that we do see in farms nowadays, the original type species for that horse no longer exists in the wild. But the Shavalski's wild horse is one that does. It is very closely related to several other uh, equids, such as the tarpan, the onger, and the zebra as well. Even though many of those are more so related to donkeys, uh, the Somali wild ass too. That's a very important species as well. So one of the things I really did want to exemplify was the history of the Shavalski's wild horse. Normally, you would do kind of stuff like this with uh, billboards, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to actually have these be so you don't need to download any billboards or anything like that. And I did want to change out the color over here to be nice yellow and blue. Really help bring out the color in this build because keep in mind this is going to be very much a large plane. Uh, and I really wanted to add all the small elements of fun and detail that I could in here. So one of the things I also add in throughout here is a custom wall. So we do kind of work with this over here. And what I'm doing, I'm doing a little bit more of an advanced technique. I'm utilizing the 4 meter wall, specifically the arctic wall, because it's the first thing that I found. And I'm essentially building a template on top of that. So I copy all the pieces in there and they actually copy themselves to the grid. So I'm able to make it into a modular system, which really does help to expedite, expedite I guess, um, building when you're kind of going for these areas and these buildings and stuff like that. I really do suggest you guys make custom walls whenever you can because it is extremely worth it. It is so worth it just to have this beautiful kind of like... Uh, backdrop to your builds and all your holding facilities. It really does come out great. And I'm also doing an interior in here as well. It's not really the prettiest. I kind of use that garage door to line up where I want it to be. I actually opt to do a custom door. But I'm doing an interior for kind of like the first time. So I do need to give a huge shout out to Zoof 
as well as Leader. I believe they both worked on Limpopo Zoo, so that was a huge inspiration for this. I was very inspired off of their zebra habitat, so I'm kind of using that as inspiration for this interior. And I really wanted to build holding facilities for Shavalsky's wild horses uh, in order to really help bring this habitat to the next level. Uh, I also do, in the next episode, even more backstage for them. I do a separate holding pen for them. One of the ideas for Preservation Plains, which I have to say, Preservation Plains is based off of a previous project that I was in. If you guys know Beyond Drew TV, he actually hosted a community zoo for several builders in the community. Wyatt Andrews Workshop, uh, Lion, I know my buddy Crux was in there, Eben, so many awesome creators uh, were able to be part of Zoot and Tower. And it was such a such, such awesome project. And they had this beautiful big area for uh, just preserving animals, uh, specifically for those that are endangered. And that was something that I was very inspired for. And I something I was like, you know what? That's such a good concept. I want to bring that back to like the modern world. So that's essentially what I did for this project in particular. I really want to kind of pay tribute to that. So this area, of course, will be titled, dubiously, I guess that's a word now, uh, Zoo Inn's Preservation Plains, uh, because it was such a really wonderful project. It brought me so close to so many awesome people, and I really wanted to see its legacy get carried on. You guys can even check that zoo out on the workshop. I really do suggest you guys do that, because it really is such a beautiful zoo. Maybe sometime in the future we could actually take a tour on that, in case if you guys are interested. Uh, let me know below if you are interested in a little bit of a tour of that zoo, because it really is super awesome but making our way throughout here and adding as many details as we can we're adding a roof right now uh custom roof as always so i actually do make use of the new hvac system that we were able to get from the conservation dlc pieces uh hopefully later this weekend or maybe even later today i don't really know but i will have a prop tier list video eventually that's going to be a super awesome video to put together for you guys because it's going to be super awesome just to see what actual pieces are the most useful especially now that i've kind of built for all the animals in the pack except for the axolotl which you know i'm kind of scared to actually get started on that i'm doing like a whole amphibian building knock on knock on wood at least because i'm scared of doing interiors for these kinds of builds <laughs> i like to take my time with them i don't really like to do speed builds and all, as always these uh series are all about speed builds and really just showing you guys my little process for it so making our way throughout here, just lining up these areas as well. You guys can see that we are still using those custom roofs. I made them once, and I'm going to make the most amount of use out of them. So we do kind of opt for a different color for this area. I think we actually do settle on an orange. So right now, we're kind of dealing with all these different areas with different colors. Our entrance area has this nice blue, and that's going to be for like all the main facilities. Uh, we're kind of working with orange for preservation planes. We're working with red for our Amor section. And I don't really know what we're going to use for the primates. Maybe we'll even go for green. I'm not sure. Maybe we'll even do like green roofs and stuff like that. Because we can do that now with like all the beautiful plants that we got. I can't stop thinking about those plants. Even when recording these speed builds, I'm like, t I have Planet Zoo on the screen right now. And I'm tempted just to build while I'm doing commentary. But no, that'll probably distract me way too much. But still, making our custom roofing over here, I really wanted to give this a little bit more of a trim. So we're kind of going throughout here and adding that with the beautiful, beautiful new planks. Really awesome pieces over there. Uh, and we're essentially going on throughout here and making it feel a little bit more built in. Uh, another thing about Preservation Plains that I do want to let you guys know, I am very excited to announce that I will be building my first monorail in Planet Zoo. Uh, you can start to see the starts of it. Starts? Starts, I guess? The initial start of it uh, in the next episode for the Scimitar Horned Oryx. Uh, that's going to be a really fun build because I also build for the Shavalskis again. Because we actually do build some more backstage paddocks for them. 
Uh, I really wanted to build that because the monorail, unfortunately, the way that I kind of designed this habitat, there really wasn't a way to incorporate the monorail all that well. But we do kind of incorporate the monorail in a very innovative way once we actually do get to there. But making our way throughout here and adding some custom fencing as well, I really wanted to have these. They're very much based off of the Okapi habitat in the Bronx Zoo. You guys will see a lot of Bronx Zoo inspiration throughout this entire series because it is the last main city zoo that I was able to visit and it's one that I'll be visiting relatively soon um, I think I'm actually going there next month believe it or not uh, very exciting stuff so that's gonna be really fun to see all that inspiration come into play but yeah making our way throughout here and adding all of these fences in here giving the R. Shabalski's horses enough room to kind of frolic and play around in and we're finally getting started on the actual landscape of the habitat itself now one of my biggest fears with this habitat i had this open on my screen i'm gonna admit i had this open on my screen for days uh just looking at this habitat and i was like oh my god i do not know what to actually do in here so that's essentially what i do start to work on uh so i kind of get started with the initial like scape of the build so I kind of went through with my kind of like bumpy brush, and that's why I like to call it. It's like the roughness brush, uh, and I kind of go throughout it, and I kind of make like these little divots, and I make these little hills throughout the habitat, and I start to frame those a little bit more with some rock, and it really does help to create such a nice vibe. I should probably have a landscaping tutorial relatively soon. I feel like that'd be a really fun thing to have. I don't know. I really do love my style of landscaping. I'm not sure if you guys do too. Maybe you guys hate it, and that would be like the most disliked video ever. Who really knows? But no, I still love that. And I also make use of those little uh, faux rock patches, like with all the pebbles and rubble and stuff. I think that's a really awesome way, especially for these habitats in particular, to deter animals such as hoofstock from really coming up to guest areas because those kinds of like uh, rigid uh, rocks are not really comfortable for the horses to walk on or even like hoofstock in general like our orcs and stuff like that bovines in particular don't really like to walk on those unless if they're like your goats and capridae then in that case you gotta be really innovative with like how you keep them away from the guests but making our way throughout here and really adding all these beautiful little divots in the road and I also felt like we needed some trees in here. Even though they're planes, they really did need some verticality. And we do start to work on these. But unfortunately, the horses would rub themselves against that. So we got to find a way to protect those trees in particular. So I start to make use of those slats once again, believe it or not. And I do some tree guards. This is a really awesome way to help protect your trees. As well as give your animals a little bit more enrichment. They'd be able to rub themselves selves against these pieces uh not of course in game because they're not enrichment but still it's a really awesome practice that zoos use to not only protect their trees but also allow their animals to still scratch against them because animals do tend to scratch themselves against real trees in real life um but essentially it's a really great way to protect the trees and that's about it so making our way throughout the habitat and actually doing foliage this time so essentially what I'm doing, I'm going throughout the entire habitat and laying down periwinkle grass. I'm using a line to surface, and, and that's a really easy thing. You just click the V key while you're playing. Uh, you don't need to actually go click the tick mark. The V key is right there when you're actually using, like, you know, WASD to move around the habitat. It's a really awesome key to learn. And I really do suggest you guys learn hotkeys. But essentially, after I did that, I essentially used it all in one group. I exited out of the group, I selected the group, and I lowered it just a smidge. That really gives a really wonderful effect when it comes to the grass in the game. It helps it look a little bit more patchy, and it helps it look a little bit more realistic, which is a really, really important vibe to achieve when you're working with beautiful big planes like this. It's a really awesome technique that I can't suggest you guys use enough. It really is super important to do that kind of jazz, and I really hope to see you guys use that technique later down the line. Obviously, horses are grazers, so they would kind of tear this habitat up. Um, it's something that I kind of had to take liberties for, because obviously horses do tend to eat a lot of grass, 
and they would eat kind of like all the grass from this habitat. I know if you go to the Bronx Zoo or even National Zoo, you can look at the Shavalsky's wild horse habitats and you'll notice they're not planted that well. That's because these guys eat pretty much all the grass that you may even put in their habitat. I'm sure hell, even if you put in AstroTurf, they'll even start to eat that. But still, I really want to include some grass in here. Just really help the vibe settle. Uh, really help it feel a lot more bright. And it's something that I really want to achieve when it came to all this kind of stuff. It really does look super awesome in the end. But making our way throughout here and adding as much as we can to help decorate the rest of the habitat as well as the exterior of the habitat. Again, I said this in the last two videos, decorating the exterior of the habitat is something just as important as decorating the interior of the habitat. It helps to frame it a lot better and it really does help to boost the guest experience a lot more. Plus, when you start to do that, you're able to bleed the areas into each other. And now that I have built for the Scimitar Horned Oryx, you'll actually see that these areas really do complement each other. And I can't stress that enough. Really building for both helps settle so much Like in terms of really grounding your zoo in terms of trying to help things look a lot better. Uh, making our way throughout here and adding some big logs as well. Uh, you guys saw me place down some broken trees as well. That's just essentially a way to help give our animals a little bit more enrichment. Granted, I have not played with that sniffing uh, mechanic all that much. Uh, because I don't know how it even works. I've been playing with the DLC for quite some time now. And I still have no idea how that damn smell mechanic works. I'm fairly certain they just kind of do it. Uh, which I think is really cool because they kind of like explore their habitat a lot more which I think is really good instead of just standing in place uh, and I'm also doing a uh, what is this a little bit of a shade structure as well for our animals uh, and I'm kind of doing it a little bit curved this is of course part of that blueprint pack that I'm talking about before it's just a really simple one in particular that I was very proud of uh, just very simple it's recolorable as well you guys can split those little um you could split the actual sails from the rest of the group and you guys can honestly do whatever you want with it. Make a bright pink one, make a bright pink and green neon color one, make it look like the Splatoon Joy-Cons. I don't really care what you guys do. Have fun with it. That's what I care about the most. I hope you guys are having fun with this pack. Also, I'm making use of Leader's uh, Rubble. So I essentially kind of took this from our little zoo heist episode from his farm zoo that he did with Zoof. And I'm making use of those for, you know, the best that I can. And it really does help to settle the habitat just a little bit more. But here we are in the B-roll. Thank you guys so much for watching. And before we do adjourn, I do need to remind you guys, again, the DLC giveaway. I'm giving away two copies of the DLC. The winners will be picked on the 30th. And they will be announced on the 1st of June, July. Wow. Uh, so be sure to stay tuned on my community page for that. In order to do that, be sure to stay subscribed as well. That's a prerequisite. Prerequisite uh, in terms of, you know, trying to get the DLC. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Tomorrow we will be covering the Scimitar Horned Orcs. And I cannot wait to see you guys in that episode. Take care. Have the most wonderful of wonderful days. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye now.